don't have a ton of new news this week, um, but I'll, I'll mention a few things in the works. Uh, as you know, we've got emojis and uh, uh, inventory previews uh, viewers coming along pretty well. The inventory one is in RC. Um, and we have a handful of bugs that we're still trying to address there. Uh, also a question of whether we may have an elevated crash rate. Uh, we'll know more about that once we have it in front of a larger cohort of uh, users. So we'll have to see kind of how that shakes out. Uh, but overall, I think the basic functionality is there and we should be able to get it out relatively shortly. Uh, emojis have gotten pulled into a discussion about updating the viewer font. Uh, the, we're looking to find, to, to put in a, a, a nicer and more recent font than the Deja Vu ones. Um, look, currently looking at the uh, Google ones, which I think are called Noto. Um, it's not written down, so I'm just attempting to remember this off the top of my head. Um, but we've run into some issues with font rendering trying different fonts. Um, so this is going to require more investigation. Don't know how long that's going to take. If it if the um, font change turns out to be too big of a hairball, we might ship the emojis with the, with the current viewer font. What's everybody else doing in, uh, in viewer land of, uh, as, uh, for, the, for the default viewer font? Yeah, if the font, yeah, the width is is different, and so there's probably going to need need to be some tweaks on on layout as well. But the first thing we're trying to do is just get the font rendering itself to work correctly. I I think we're running into some glitches with uh, uh, the the kerning not getting supported correctly right now, so we're going to have to poke around with that a bit. Is everybody else using Deja Vu or using other things? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So other than fonts, uh, we have officially deprecated the Windows 32 and uh, older versions of Mac OS. Um, so newer viewer builds won't support those. Um, we tried to put the old viewer that did support those into its own uh, spur cohort that then people wouldn't get automatically updated from. And currently that's showing up in the list of RCs, which isn't quite what we're shooting for. Uh, so we're going to need to poke at that a bit um, to get it to behave correctly. But at least it is, uh, at least it's moving in the right direction. So <laughs> we'll keep you posted. Uh, let's see, other things. Uh, of course, the the main thrust of a lot of the dev work right now is trying to get GLTF uh, materials viewer shipped out. That has uh, that has some some issues with trying to get the rendering to be uh, you know both both legacy compatible and also behaving well with newer content. There's some balancing acts involved in that, and I don't think we have the final solution to exactly what combination of uh, settings we're going to want to use. Uh, but it's being actively worked on. Um, let's see, Dave's not here. Cosmic, do you want to talk a bit about the investigation around this? Oh, about the viewer? Yeah, oh, but just the, the work around GLTF uh, materials and, and trying to get the viewer out. Well, the latest uh, investigation that uh, Dave P is diving into is uh, uh, net networking bandwidth. Um, it appears that um, G GLTF uh, script updates are a bit chonkier um, than previously uh, 
expected. Um, so that is uh, something that will need to be addressed going forward. Um, Keynes is still working on uh, uh, reflections, making uh, good progress there um, in terms of uh, uh, hero probes and uh, their use in mirrors. Uh, as has been previously touched on, um, there is only one hero pro probe and um, it is chosen automatically, um, so that should hopefully uh, keep that in check. Um, and Gideon is currently working on uh, uh, polishing that. Um, and as for me, I'm working on the GLTF back bug backlog, currently working on permissions. Um, sort of uh, working that out, and Brad's uh, working on the GLTF backlog as well with a f focus on the networking aspect. I, Brad, do you have anything to add? Uh, you covered it pretty well. Yeah, the, the current bugs are, are the, the chunky updates and, uh, and some objects disappearing uh, issues and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Um, one thing we didn't talk about was the thing um, that Veer mentioned, some of the lighting normalization. Um, uh, but I, 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 I don't know. I think, yeah, Dave's the one who's been managing those conversations, so he should probably speak to that. Um, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for the updates. Let's see, other content from us this week. Uh, I think uh, that's that's all I that's all I had. Mojo, anything else we uh, should be talking about? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Um, no, I mean, uh, um, I, I came in the server this week. Um, so maybe next week I'll have questions. <laughs> all right, thanks. All right, well, I guess we're on to uh, other topics in general discussion. What's everybody else up to in viewer development land? Any any new interesting releases or features? Hello. Can you hear me all right? Uh, yeah, I'm coming through. Oh. We've got a new update. We released it about two weeks ago. Uh, Genesis 880. Um, the main focus was uh, a new uh, AO engine, a snapshot floater, and Mr. Magoo for those people with uh, with poorly eyesight. Uh, it's scalable fonts now within the the IM. Uh, the other news we got is that we've relocated our servers because popularity comes at a cost. And we've now got one that mirrors, I think I'm getting this correct, Mel will tell you if you're not, but we were always serving from uh, Europe and therefore our USA users were getting uh, slower download speeds. So apparently we're now mirroring, but that's Mel's department. And currently in test, at the moment we're working on... Um, brand new air research with lots of filtering to bring us in line with a lot of other, other a lot of other offers that are out there. Oh yeah, the panic buttons, that's that's on the on the main uh, console down the bottom, the UI thing. It's a little red dancing man. And if you press him everything stops because people never know how to stop dancing in this game. Well, that's great. Maybe we should have other kinds of panic buttons so people are alarmed about anything else. My favorite thing being the scalable fonts, so you can make them bigger now. For people who have to wear spectacles, you can now make them as big as you want. Well, within reason, otherwise it looks ridiculous, obviously, but you can... Because they, everyone's treated as if they have eighteen-year-old eyes, and although I may look like that age, I'm a little bit older, just fractionally. Yeah, that's. I, I think. Uh, I think having uh, scalable fonts would be would be a nice feature. We 
I mean, we kind of have a, we have the sort of scale up the whole UI, but we don't let you just kind of make the font bigger. How, how are you handling that? Do you try to have the rest of the UI just kind of catch up as, as the, as the uh, fonts get bigger or, 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 or is it more like kind of everything grows and the, and the fonts go along with it? No, no just you the are, fonts. Do you are no, got, um, Yeah. You, no, you, you take it, Shep, you understand it better than I do. Say, the, the UI stays the same, it's just the fonts grow bigger, so yes, there are some issues where the font gets too big, it doesn't fit in the UI. But... It can kind of blow out of the uh, size um, uh, reserve no, no, that's, that's a split, or whatever. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a side effect, unfortunately. One of the one of the major feedbacks we get from everybody the the original view we worked on had a ninety six DPI we immediately increased it to one hundred four that was the first, one of the first things we did incidentally it's a year old today it was our first beta build we didn't release until November but we're a year old today um, but this scalable font thing the amount of people coming through saying that you know how can we make it bigger everything else is fine but how can I make the writing bigger. That was just something we just had to address, and it's and it's so nice to be able to see you all at long last. Yeah, that sounds like a nice addition. Uh, probably we should look into that at some point. Uh, the uh, fonts that we use now do seem to be getting smaller over time. Well, I always say it's getting smaller. It's not our eyesight, is it? The fonts are getting smaller. Yeah, it's just computers, you know. Well, congratulations on your first year. Well, we'll be celebrating again on the 1st of November because that was our first release. We were actually ready before that, but we weren't. there was no way we were going to release on Halloween. It doesn't seem a good, a, a wise date, does it? Seems to be a lot of interest in a VGA mode. Should, uh, yeah, we should take that up. I feel like our, our game on, uh, on dumb terminals really isn't that good. We, we need something where we can automatically convert the, the uh, image map into little sort of colored ANSI characters. And, and uh, you know, have have full support for non-graphic environments. Can I ask you about the thumbnail thing that you've got? Is it actually out out release now, or are you still working on that? The thumbnail. Uh, that is in a an RC right now. Um, it's in pretty good shape, but it hasn't actually been promoted to our default viewer yet. Um, there's a there's a couple of bugs we want to fix, and there's. Uh, concerns around whether there may be uh, an increased crash rate so we're trying to get a little more data on that before we make the call whether it's ready to go Did so you have a I'm hoping to be going out in the next few weeks but uh, 
it's not uh, it's not quite there yet it's you know anybody who wants to can download it and test it but you just got to get it off the off the alternate viewers page was it dropping the thumbnails or something I saw something out in the server note about it about thumbnails being lost or something for it uh thumbnails getting dropped with the with the thumbnails viewer I, th I, I believe I saw a bug fix going out on a server note this week something it might be something else then about mm. thumbnails maybe, um, maybe so I, I don't I don't remember that but there's uh yeah there's a lot going on in server land. Ryder, does that ring a bell? Uh, repeat the question. Was there a server bug uh, with uh, thumbnails getting dropped? Um, I believe there was. Um, it, uh, it wasn't. Um, there was something I saw come through just this week with um and I don't remember what the exact conditions were, but some things were getting lost in inventory. But that's all I can think. Of. That's all I can think. Of. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I, I know that there are some uh, remaining bugs on the viewer side as well that we're working on getting those fixed. Uh, as uh, as Mojo mentioned, we're also in the process of adding thumbnails for the new center library content um so once we've once you've gotten those changes made and if you're using the a, a thumbnails viewer then you can see you can see those uh those images which should be nice um in terms of where the best forum is to ask about center content uh i'm not really sure we had we had some questions came up yesterday for the content creators user group, but we didn't have anyone on hand who was part of the uh, team that was that was actually working on that content. Um, you know, the the ideal thing would be that we'd get a, a representative like uh, uh, you know someone from the moles or or someone else from that group um, to to come to one of the meetings and and discuss those kinds of questions. Um, so uh, I will I will ask around and see if we can uh, get a volunteer for that because that would probably be the best way to address these questions. Um, it's but it was you know all that work was done by uh, you know another team and we don't really we don't really have any uh, uh, anybody in uh, in engineering who can kind of represent all of that stuff fairly. You see that now, I just put out a fix where thumbnails were stripped when editing raised objects. I don't know if that is to do with outfits or something else. Thumbnails were stripped when editing raised objects. Okay, well, the, the, yeah, there could have been a bug with that. There's, that's one of the trickier bits of the whole thing is making sure that the thumbnails get preserved as you go from you know, inventory item to item in world to item in the content of another item and so forth and all of this uh, stuff has to get carried through successfully to avoid losing your thumbnails um, which we're trying to do but it's possible there's there's holes in that somewhere along the way
Anyone else working on viewer updates these days? Yeah, well, PBR is certainly a big one, and of course, uh, as we mentioned, there's still bits that are getting worked on there. So, I think it will be uh, will be an interesting merge for everyone. I have another question, if you don't mind. Uh, I know that Firestorm re manages to retire older versions of its viewer, and I, I spoke to you about this. For, um, is that handled on their server? It's not handled by Linden Lab, is that right? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question for Firestorm. Uh, yep, uh, there's an answer. So how does that work? It checks in with the server as to what, as to what version you're running, or you have to be running a certain number, or it expires by a certain day, or, but it, it's all handled by the server and it, and it truncates the login process, presumably, does it? So, how do you retire an old version and if you don't know what the version number is? So, I see, so the viewer, well, the viewer must identify what it is then, to know if it's blocked or not. So the viewer contacts a Firestorm server when it's first starting up and says, hey, am I obsolete? And Firestorm server says, you know, yes, you're obsolete, you should be updated to such and so uh, build number, something like that. Okay, so it just gets the list and then figures out for itself whether it's obsolete. All right, and that's the only way to do it, is it? It's the only way of retiring an old version. See, I'm trying to find a way to retire old versions without them phoning home. Um, yeah, I can see the way you do that. It doesn't, but it has to ring into the server, doesn't it? It has to phone home to find out whether it's allowed or not. Yeah, 
that's a good idea. An age limit. Particularly on nightly builds, yeah. No, I like that. That's, that's quite a good idea, that. Yeah, it's pretty absolute, isn't it? Hmm. I was I I asked I was asking though if, if there was a way to do it uh, on the Linden end. You just give a number that's accepted, and everything below it is not accepted. Um, but I believe that the the notice the lab sends out is not quite so friendly. It's not but you you need to update. It's like this view has been blocked, which sort of leads it into making them think you've done something wrong. So yeah, we we have with? a. Uh... We have a version manager mechanism uh, on our end that ties into our our viewer updater, so it uh, so it kind of uh, it kind of can call in and say, you know, well, I'm I'm running uh, I'm running such and so version now. What am I supposed to do? And it'll get a, a message, oh, you're supposed to update, or or you know, you're good, whatever. Uh, but we don't really have it set up to uh, to integrate with third parties currently is the problem um, that uh, that might be something we'd want to do at some point in the future but uh, so uh, unfortunately it's not really set up so we can just kind of plug into it currently yeah I believe your system only caters for band viewers like that Felix is saying for things that have gone horribly wrong and therefore the notice is is correspondingly horrible to go with it Yeah, I mean, you you can't have viewers that are completely banned, but the more the more common mechanism is just that uh, viewers are uh, are subject to a kind of a mandatory update, and so you you would uh, you know get uh, the, so the, so if I was if the, the, let's suppose there was another viewer, I'm not going to use anybody here, but let's suppose that somebody's got a wonderful viewer and they accidentally release something that is truly horrible in a nightly build and they want to remove it there's currently no method of doing that is there then unless they get it to ring into their own server So, from what you're saying, Beck, we should have a redundancy built in in case. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't remember it coming up, but I'm pretty sure that if we got notification that a particular viewer build had, you know, gone rogue and was attempting to turn into Skynet or something, um, that we could find a way to refuse connections from, you know, from that uh, that viewer string. Okay, that's good to know, thank you. Yeah, I'm not thinking of TP violations, I'm thinking of a, a horrible build being accidentally re uh, released by accident that doesn't work as it should do and, you know, brings everything to its knees. I'm trying to look at a protective thing in case something should ever happen by accident, you know. You you have one, uh, but you have one where people could look at people's um, HUDs and things, didn't you? But then you have the ability to block it, so you didn't. That was the end of that. That's what I'm thinking. I'm I'm trying to think ahead. All oh, right. Sorry, I'm with you, Felix.
Yeah, I'd say if you're looking for the something that actually needs a fast response, probably putting in a security SEC Jira would be the would be the best channel. Um, you know, we have the we have a mechanism for reporting issues with uh, uh, you know the, the the TPV viewers that we manage on the on the kind of approved list, but the that isn't so much intended for for uh, dealing with emergencies. It's it's more just uh, you know kind of keeping track of uh, whether everything is 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 uh, you know doing the right thing over time. Yeah, I mean, it would be pretty rare to accidentally create a viewer that needed an SEC uh, issue. <laughs> I wouldn't encourage anybody to try, but, um, you know, if uh, if that did happen, then that would, that would be the way to go. Of course, if people are intentionally creating abusive viewers, they're not usually going to tell us about it. Uh, sure, what's the question about asset UUID assignment? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're talking about trying to uh, trying to have the UUID for a texture be a uh, uh, you know, a consistent hash of the contents. Um, so that so that way, if you you know feed in the same, if somebody tries to upload the exact same contents another time, they're going to get back the same UUID. Um, so uh, hopefully that would avoid you know kind of accidental duplication of uh, of content and save us a bit of storage. Um, yeah, I don't know if we'd try to add any other, uh, any other metadata or if we would just, you know, track the, the actual contents of the, of the texture itself, um, you know, just for, just for, for deduplicating, um, Oh, you're still saying the textures currently get a signature injected into them. Yeah, so you'd have to you'd have to remove anything that varied from one upload to another and just use the actual, you know, kind of pixel contents. Yeah, yeah. And if we do that, uh, you know, if we got that working with textures, we might look into doing it with other types of assets over time as well. Um, so yeah, at least at least in principle, that would let us save some some storage. Um, in in practice, a huge chunk of our storage is actually going to objects rather than textures, which is a whole separate uh, a whole separate issue. But uh, uh, at least for textures, there's a fairly straightforward uh, way to to proceed on that. I think. Uh, permissions issues, well, I mean, yeah, they would get the same UUID, but the, the asset ID isn't really owned by anyone. It's, it's not the, it's not the ID of the item in inventory. It's just the, uh, which, you know, everybody would have their own inventory item. It's, it's just the ID of the, of the I, asset. I, I was...
going to jump in here. Um, the uh, the asset ID is the ID of the actual data in in uh, uh, in the CDN. The uh, everything everything in your inventory also has what's uh, called an inventory ID, and permissions are associated with the inventory ID rather than the asset ID. So if I uh, even even now if I gave you an object, say I gave you a uh, no copy note card, um, that note card, my copy of the note card, which I can edit, um, and and your copy of the 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 note card inventory item, would each have their own permissions, but they point to the they point to the same asset. That clear? And if it was an item that you were allowed to modify, then when you modified it, it would create a new asset. So now, so now your your item in inventory would point to a different asset ID than the uh, than the inventory item that that you were originally given. Correct. One uh, an asset once uploaded is immutable. Which is one reason we have so much, so much storage in our asset server right now. <laughs> it's lots of old copies of things. Yeah, sorry, Barry. Can I ask a question about the um, chat bubbles bug versus toasts? Um, that I reported a couple of weeks ago. Any sort of word on that? Uh, do you happen to have the, the Jira number for that? Um, I'm not sure. I think I pasted it. To, let me check. That's It's where if you put bubbles on in the viewer, in the SL viewer, you don't get uh, toasts. It hides it. Um, so it's like one or the other, but also the chat bubble feature um, is just a hot mess. If everybody's typing, suddenly you just see huge blocks of text over everybody's head, whereas uh, the Firestorm viewer, for instance, is just the ellipses happening, and then when they enter, it goes to the toast. But the SL viewer puts it in the bubble above your head and becomes boom, noise. Um, so that if you're if you're going to go into the bubble files, I'd really love it if you could break that up, make it two different things. Uh, yeah. If 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 there's a Jira for that, I can I can take a look and see the status. I don't uh, I don't know uh, offhand what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean we do review bug reports and and suggested feature changes in uh, kind of different meetings each week and, and okay. stuff uh, sometimes I'll try and find that before um, I do but the other one was talking about um, us getting chat options at the bottom of the the screen the viewer instead of it being hidden behind a chat window a chat button because as I said in the past the new residents are just not realizing that's where they type because it's not clear uh-huh so uh Either was the suggestion that. to change the way the ui worked or just to change like kind of what the default settings were for the well to change how it works to actually give us a bottom chat bar uh so you want a chat is... bar you you want like a, a line for entering text that actually lives outside of the chat floater correct. itself correct correct because yeah. just so often you just have no idea people are communicating with you because, one, if you have bubbles activated, then you got, don't get the toasts. And you've got to actively click the chat bar to see that you've just missed four different IMs and seven paragraphs of nearby chat. Yeah. Just because you're not looking at this tiny little square at the bottom of your screen. Okay, so right. if you had a... I mean, if you had a... a text entry box at the bottom of the screen 
that would that would give you a place that you could type something. But uh, how how would that help you know that other people were typing things? Because it appears as a toast. So, hold on one second. So this is, for instance, what uh, Pantera just typed. So I can see it at the bottom. And then, sorry, I'm trying to get a clear what it so, is. Though. So like everything that, that anybody types kind of scrolls through that box or is it only the stuff that you type? The box is for you to type in, but directly above the box is the toasts. Okay. And so if you, if you, you can still click nearby chat and it will open up as a separate window, uh, a separate, I don't know what the actual term, but yeah, a window. But if you're just living your best life, you're just typing in this chat and everything is appearing above it. So it's all just, nobody had to press anything to get to that place to see those things. It's all just default. So, sorry, let me just, so I can get a Gyazu, sorry. So it's all, it's all just showing up like that. Okay, I see. Uh, so which, it's just so, so we, easy to use. Yeah. So do we already support the toast, but we just don't have the the entry box you're talking about? Is that what you're saying? Right, but if you have bubbles enabled, which you need to know that somebody's communicating with you. I mean, sorry, at the Welcome Hub, for instance, we have no idea if anybody is responding to us. We don't know if a new resident is reacting. They're just standing there. So you need bubbles on because then at least you can see that somebody's in the active mode of actually typing something. Yeah. But I realized when I went deep down to get you the information that when you have the bubbles activated, the toasts don't work. So you're getting one or the other only. Yeah. So to be able to see that they're typing so that we don't walk away from them or people just don't stop helping a customer or whatever happens in your SL, you're sacrificing the toasts. So if you want the toasts, you don't have to keep the nearby chat open all the time, which takes up real estate. You then don't get the bubbles. So you could just walk away from somebody who might be a slower typer. typer. They might have a, an, an issue and be re relying on a translator to copy and paste. There's so many reasons that those things work hand in hand. Okay. Uh, let's see. I, obviously, I don't play around with the chat settings very often. I, I just do everything in the floater. So I'm just trying to get up to speed on the other options here. Um, Okay, so if I click some, if I click a checkbox called Bubble Chat, then stuff uh, pops up above individual uh, residents as they as they type things, and then we've got options associated with like different types of IMs and so forth. It says pop up the message, open conversations window, flash toolbar button, or no action. Um, so in that case, so which one of those corresponds to the toasts or, or does, does none of those correspond to the toasts? The one that Atlas just pasted is the toast one. So while I was trying to find one, I realized the other, that it was just the reason that I thought we we didn't have toasts was because I had bubbles activated. But for instance, the way you're, you're all sitting there as a group, if you all just typed answers to each other right now, you would just have huge blocks of paragraphs above your head so that it would just be completely impossible to read that without actually going in and having to open chat, open nearby chat, and then read it from there, which I have a huge monitor but some people have much smaller monitors. It ends up taking up a huge amount of screen space, whereas with other viewers, it's just toasts. It's just floating. And you still get the bubbles. You just don't get the bubble of text. 
Yeah, this is great insight, Sassy. Um, just some quick brainstorming. Um, are you not seeing the new users typing animations? Um, and would having something like that ellipsis appearing in local chat, uh, identifying who is doing the typing before they've typed, help solve this problem so you wouldn't have to go to chat bubbles? Right. Well, yes, that's exactly what Firestorm has. So while while Jenna, for instance, right now is typing, I'm actually saying, keep typing, Jenna, please, because I need to get a GIF. <laughs> so while she's typing, I'm just seeing an ellipsis appear, so I know that she's typing. But when she presses enter, because I'm in the Firestorm viewer at the moment, it's not going to turn around and put that surely chat bubbles by default all above her head. It's not going to be one big chunk above her head which means it just appears in the floater text and I can read it so right. I'm not looking in 15 different directions having to press bubbles um, and and as far as looking at their hands typing you're not always in that situation because at the welcome hub I don't know if you've visited there yet it's sometimes eight nine avatars all in this huddle at the landing point backs turn to you, you you're not seeing that because you're looking at all the different things that are going on around you or you're just staring at this floater window that you have to look at to in case somebody is talking because mm -hmm. nothing's working together like it does on other viewers and it's just making it when you're used to one thing for a long, long time, I, I mean, I guess you can get used to it, but it it just seems a fault. And I know that it's definitely a bug that the that the bubble is overriding the toast because that just makes no sense. I mean, it it seems like a bug. <laughs> I can s certainly uh, empathize with the pain points there. I appreciate it. We're going to link up your uh, jurors and talk about them later, I'm sure. Thank you so much. It's just, it's also like having to say 20 times, uh, if you want to respond to us, please press the chat button and then find the nearby chat tab and then type it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, the, it's, it sounds like there may be kind of a hole in the discovery process there where it's it's tricky for people to get oriented. Yeah, there. but on that note, I have to say last night I spent four hours at the Welcome Hub and it was an absolute joy watching people come in in Senra and I've never seen the Avatar's new residents move so fast off the landing point in the last two months as they did last night because they've actually already done the process of choosing their look whereas two nights before they're standing there for hours in appearance mode trying to work out what they're supposed to do so kudos that's really interesting. So, uh, so you think people are less likely to try to kind of customize themselves right off the bat um, with the with the Senra abs because they're they're kind of happier with their appearance when they start out. Correct. They already did it. You've already yeah. made them do it at the login screen, which was always my dream that you had like driver's ed sort of screen mode where they knew everything by the time they actually landed. So this is just part of that. You've actually succeeded in that. They've been through it. They created their character. So even if they took an hour to create their character, they're not standing in the landing point doing it anymore. They're doing it on their computer. I mean, I know they're still, you know what I mean, <laughs> in their browser. They're in their browser. So um, they've actually done the choosing. They've chosen the color of their eyes. They've chosen their hair. So then when they've landed, they're actually walking. And I'm absolutely, they would be standing there for hours, cluttering up the, the landing point because they go into appearance mode as soon as they land or they start asking how why why they're on a horse or their wings are in the way of somebody else's face all of these things but now they're just landing and walking and it's been amazing and more people did the tutorial last night than I've ever seen because they were already done
do you know what I mean? Whereas before they were trying to make their avatars look a certain way and the tutorial just would get, n no, they weren't yeah. interested after that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's really good feedback. Um, uh, Oh, we'll be we'll be curious to see uh, you know as as once once the once the new uh, new join flow has been out there for a while. I'll be kind of curious to see what the what the stats are and you know if we see a a, a difference in uh, in behavior and and you know kind of retention for folks coming in that way. Yeah, I did see like two different people ended up going into their inventory and churning into a one of the other avatars one thing i noticed is that you haven't fixed the the male female icon button on the bottom uh, on the left still shows uh the library avatars in their last incarnation and it says new avatars and it's still you know trixie and and the dog lady and and those sorts of things so i think that that's confusing if somebody that has done senra then clicks that and sees the word new avatars so then clicks that i did see two people change from Senra into Dog Lady and and uh, one of the other avatars, but they were not at the landing point anymore. As I said, they had moved because they'd done the beginning part. So the rest was just investigative and just discovering things in the, in the UI. Okay, good. Well, hope it's uh, hope it's going to be catching on. Um, yeah, I see there's some more uh, comments in chat about concerns about the Senra um, uh, dev kit and and license wording. Um, as if uh, I can explain that, um, if I if I can explain, if I can uh, emphasize the the point I'm trying to make with the comment. Mm -hmm. um, currently, the um, the restrictions in the entire license doesn't seem to be the warning doesn't seem to apply to just items created for Senra. it applies for every single item you create in second life once you sign that agreement hmm, okay that that does seem like <laughs> seem like not a great wording uh as as you mentioned we'll we'll try to get somebody um who actually involved with the the uh Senra content creation uh involved in one of the meetings um this the, that's the sort of thing that probably would need patch to comment it's you know you're getting into legal, town would, hall might be an awesome idea then that way it won't be walls. region limited yeah uh sorry what would be region limited I was just saying that maybe a town hall might be a good idea, a Senra town hall meeting. Mm. That way it's not region limited, it's it's the whole of SL. So people can stream it. I mean, I know yesterday when we were trying to get people to come from the creators um, group that are often upset about things and I'm like, well, here's your opportunity. And they're like, I'm in the middle of releasing something. Can I stream it somewhere? Um, a town hall could be streamable and then that way something, uh, you could have a whole lot of molds or other lindens that are accepting questions from people and they can be addressed as as the town hall. Like, you know, old school town yeah. halls were awesome. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. We'll, um, we'll, we'll try, to, uh, try to pass that along and see if we can uh, get, uh, get some interest in setting something up there. Uh, let's see, automatic saving the initial avatar, I think with, uh, I think at least with the Senra content, uh, you will automatically have your appearance saved as a, as an outfit, um, but I would have to double check that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the script that runs when you first set up your account goes through a bunch of steps where it, you know, copies the contents you requested out of the library and sticks them in a folder and makes an outfit based on the folder. Oh. Um, 
So, uh, but of course, that's that's only going to have an effect for new users. Um, but it's it's uh, not going to folders. Things aren't going to folders. I noticed that too. Sorry, but if somebody wears something from the library, it's not bolding at all to show them that it's worn. So if um, and then when it is worn, it's not bolded, but a copy of it goes to objects folder or body parts folder or clothing folder. So the one outfit that you put on is in three different locations. It's, oh, and then if you press okay. the Senra, um, uh, you've got displays now at the Welcome Hub so people can just click them to get the outfit. The outfit is not coming in all the colors. It's only coming in that one individual color, and it's coming to your objects folder. That's just teaching people really bad expectations of mm. how they would get items. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we should we should take a look at that then. Um, there there is a process that uh, that we run through. You know, right after someone picks their new appearance, that. Uh, does the appropriate or does some sort of copying and linking to uh, to generate the various components in your in your inventory? But it could be that we should uh, we should modify that and kind of add another another sort of folder layer there. Also, is there another video going to be made? Because I was really surprised that a nine minute video on the new Senra project was only showing the mail. Yeah, uh, I don't know. That would be another question for the center team. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we're at time for this meeting, but uh, a lot of good, a lot of good feedback and comments this week. And uh, as I say, we'll we'll uh, reach out to the center folks and see if we can find uh, a venue to let people uh, uh, talk with them in the future. Thank you for a very good meeting. You will excuse me while I rush down the pub because it's 10 p.m. on a Friday night. Can you imagine <laughs> sitting here. No, don't want, don't want to, don't want to let the pub wait. All right, bye. See you later on. All right, have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you, everyone.